River gods and goddesses. G'day to all you lovely people and welcome back to my channel. I'm Kathy, and today I want to talk about this. Rivers of London by Ben Aronovich. I just finished it actually a couple of weeks ago and I wanted to discuss it and review it actually. Okay, this is an urban fantasy series similar to the Dresden Files by Jim Butcher and the Alex Averius series by Benedict Jacker. I think there are around 10 books in the series and this is the first published book. It came out in 2011, not that long ago actually. This novel takes place in contemporary London and it is written in the first person, the main character being Peter Grant, who is a probationary constable in the London police, who, <laughs> who actually tries to take a statement from a ghost after a murder. But the London that we are introduced to has fantastical elements. There are ghosts and there are vampires and there are perhaps other creatures which we haven't met yet. There is also magic and there are also gods and goddesses of the rivers of London, which is where the title comes from. In essence, this is a murder mystery and we follow the clues that Peter gathers to figure out who the actual killer is. A side plot is Peter's exploration of the magical elements that exist in London. Now I wanted to talk about the writing style, this world, the characters, and then I will get into what I liked about the book and what I didn't like about the book before I give a summary and a score at the end. Aronovich is a very good writer, clearly. He has a wonderful grasp of language, complex language. He has a broad vocabulary. He apparently has written certain serials in Doctor Who, and I'm a big fan of Doctor Who, so I like that. And he has a really wonderful dry and droll wit. There are sometimes some hilarious lines in this book, but delivered in a very dry way, which I really enjoy actually. It's not in your face comedy. It is more subtle than that. And yet very, very clever. His actual dialogue seems, I think, realistic. I'm not in my twenties anymore. And the main character, Peter, is only in his mid twenties. So I don't know if this is how young people do talk, but it seems accurate to me. It didn't jar. The author doesn't tell us everything about the characters or what is going on. He allows us to draw our own conclusions at times, though sometimes he did slip up. I think we are told several times that Peter is often too distracted. I would have preferred to learn this for myself. His descriptions of places in particular in London itself. For someone who has never been to London, I sometimes felt lost as to where we are. It kind of assumes that you know London and I have never been. So for me, it felt like I have no idea where one place is in relation to another not even the rivers. And there isn't any map included, I don't think, in this book, so I couldn't even picture where each of these rivers were. The other thing is that whilst initially, I really enjoyed the descriptions of these different places, but at some point, I got really bored with it because I didn't know London and I didn't know what significance these places had and I got tired with the extreme detail that he provided. I thought that he could have cut it in half and I would have enjoyed it so much more. Now let's talk about the magical world that Aronovich has created. It's contemporary London with magical elements, certain magical creatures, as well as magic itself. 
in the sense of there are wizards who can use magic. And Peter is approached by another police officer who is also a wizard who wants to train him in magic. The magic was often explained through science, which I actually did like, and it's not something you usually see in fantasy, or not the ones that I have read anyway. So I liked that, but clearly it needs to be fleshed out a lot more. I still don't know why certain people can draw magic and others can't. I don't even know if that's accurate. I don't know if everyone is able to use magic or only some people. However, I think the main focus in this book relates to the gods and goddesses of the rivers of London. Yeah, to be honest, I didn't find them all that interesting. They kind of seemed almost superfluous at times. Sometimes when we spend time with these gods, I got bored and I thought, yeah, I'm more interested in this mystery than I am in these gods and goddesses. Now I wanted to talk about the characterizations. There are several major characters. Peter Grant, obviously, since we're viewing the world through his eyes, he is our main focus. He is a person of mixed race. He is 20 something. He is naive, I think eager, intelligent. I don't know if I can call him highly intelligent, but he seems intelligent. He has an excellent sense of humor. He's very funny actually at times. He seems like your typical 20 something, nothing that really stands out. To be honest, after finishing Rivers of London, I came away without fully grasping who this person Peter Grant is. There is a hint that he has some family issues, but in the end, I still feel he is a mystery. And that is all right. I don't need to understand everything about a character in one book, particularly when there is a series of books. He wasn't, however, a character that I fell madly in love with. I'm really quite lukewarm about him. I not loving his character, nor am I disliking it. I think I need more time to see if he will grow more and more on me. Some characters, it takes a bit of time before you learn to love them. Another major character is Leslie, his fellow probationary police officer. She seemed interesting to me. She seems like a strong personality, driven, intelligent, See, I have a better grasp of her than I do of Peter Grant. Then we have the police officer who is the wizard. And I'm not telling you who that is. His character is really mysterious. And I think that was deliberate on the part of the author. It was meant to keep us guessing as to what his background is, who exactly he is, what he is like. The only real sense I had was that he is not familiar with technology. He seems a little bit old fashioned and that's about all. The gods and goddesses. Again, I felt that they were superficially drawn. Perhaps one or two, you feel you understand better than others, but most of them haven't been fleshed out enough for me to really understand them well. I honestly didn't love anyone in this book, not really. Generally, when I start a new series, I fall in love with one or two characters, usually. Not always though. But in this book, I didn't fall in love with any. That tells me I wasn't drawn very much to any of the characters. But don't forget, this is written in the first person, so we are viewing this world through Peter Grant's eyes. And so what I'm learning of these characters is based on his impression of them, not necessarily who they are. And being young and male, yeah, with some of the women, he seems to focus a little bit on how good looking they are or how attracted he might be to them. And it means I don't get a good idea of 
is there more to this character than just how amazingly good looking they are? There is one young goddess, for example, that Peter spends a lot of time with. And I honestly could not tell you much about her character at all. She seems mischievous, flirty, <laughs> kind at times, I guess. But that's about the limit of what I know about her. I would like characters fleshed out a lot more than that in the future. Now let's talk about what I liked and what I didn't like. Okay. I'm going to start as I always do with the things I didn't like and then finish with the things I liked. Hmm. The gods. Honestly, they didn't impress me. I didn't find this whole idea of gods and goddesses, of the rivers, all that interesting either. I suspect, however, that they are going to play a major role throughout this series. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. At this point, I'm a little ambivalent whether I'm going to enjoy that aspect of it. I guess it depends what the author does with it in the future. But after this book, I could have done without them and I wouldn't have missed them. Something else I didn't like is that Peter, who wants to be a police officer, so quickly was offered to be an apprentice in magic. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it was just too fast, too soon. And in addition to which, Peter didn't even investigate what that meant. I found that really unbelievable, actually. I thought anybody would want to know so much more before they get involved in something like this. I know I would have. I would have had a million and one questions. Now, perhaps that was deliberate on the author's part to make it more mysterious. What kind of magic is available? How do you learn about magic? But it just didn't work for me. There is a lot of hints as to rules and agreements that we know nothing about and I can live with those more than I can with Peter just blithely going on and saying yeah I want to be a wizard <laughs> I'm sorry but yeah I think he's a little too old to be Harry Potter given that he's of mixed race I did expect perhaps some reference to possible racism or discrimination that he has faced but the author stayed well away from that that I didn't like either okay the descriptions I mentioned earlier how much I didn't like them and I would quite often particularly towards the end of the book just skip those paragraphs entirely I didn't care that is not what the writer was hoping to accomplish I think this let down the book for me the most, and it really did take away a lot of my enjoyment of this book. I hate to say it, but it's true. And I generally like great descriptions of places I've not been to, so I get a good visual of it. I didn't feel like that here. It felt like more a catalog of details rather than say evocative prose that gives you this wonderful visual. It felt like <laughs> a tour guide's description. I also wasn't completely happy with the way the mystery was resolved, the murder mystery. Not the actual person who was guilty, but more the final confrontation seemed a little, yeah, I don't know how to describe it. It didn't appeal to me. That's all I will say. Now, some of these criticisms are quite minor, but in the end, it was the writing that I didn't really love. No. Now, let's move on to the things I liked. I loved the humour. Yeah, very typical, very dry British humour. It really appealed to me. It was one of the biggest strengths of the book, I felt. Peter is also quite a charming character. I just don't have a good grasp of who he is yet. Perhaps I need more books to learn a lot more about him that will make me understand him a bit better. 
we don't get to see a lot of his internal thoughts not a lot it seems more just relaying what is going on i think i would like to see more introspection in this character to give me a better understanding of him i liked leslie the other character i didn't like how the story ended regarding her but that is all i'm going to say but she seems like a good foil for peter who seems a little <laughs> I hate to say it, almost flighty at times, even though he really isn't. Now, while the author does not really touch on discrimination at all, really, in this book, he did deal with the, <laughs> the red tape of bureaucracy, the idiocy of it, the lack of respect sometimes that police get. And I think he is definitely a police supporter. And there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes he seemed a little bit too sympathetic towards the police. I haven't decided yet if I like it or not. I guess I need to read a little bit more. But I did notice that he is clearly an admirer of the police. And that sometimes the public don't always treat the police well. <laughs> yeah, well, I think the reverse is also applicable. And I like to see things that are a bit more balanced rather than perhaps biased in one way. Regardless, what I did like was him talking about the ridiculousness of the bureaucracy, all the red tape that sometimes the police have to go through or anyone has to go through to ensure that people are protected from any liability. Yeah, it seems we've become this very litigious society that is more concerned about covering our asses rather than actually trying to get to the truth. I also liked that we are not told everything in this book, that clearly if you want to learn more about some of the characters, about magic, etc., you need to read more. In summary, hmm, when I started it, I really enjoyed this book. I won't deny it. I'd say at least a third of the way in, I was loving it. And then it just started to bog down in too much description, too much detail. And let me be clear, that doesn't mean that this is a bad book. It is just something I personally didn't like. And by the end of the book, I was very ambivalent about whether I wanted to continue reading this series. However, when I was still enjoying the book, I ordered the next two, and I do prefer to read at least two books by a new author before I make up my mind. Because I do think that one book isn't always enough to judge an author, a new author, and Aronovich is a new author to me. And let's not forget, this is his first book. Hopefully, he does improve in future books and I'll enjoy the series and want to read all of them. Do I recommend Rivers of London? Hmm. I guess it depends. I think that if you are a native of London or you know London well, perhaps you will enjoy those descriptions much more than someone who is unfamiliar with it. However, I won't deny, this, I felt, was a mediocre read for me. As for a score, I score out of 10, and I'm going to give this 5 to 5.5. Five if it is under 5, I generally do not read the books again. At the moment, I don't think I would ever reread this book. But quite often, series do improve. And if I love the future books, then I will reread this one. Let me know if you think I'm being too harsh. Probably because I, apparently I am very tough in scoring books. And let me know if you have read The Rivers of London and what your thoughts are on it. And you certainly don't have to agree with me. I am just curious to hear what other people thought of The Rivers of London. And you can put it down in the comments or you can contact me on Instagram. Well, thank you all very much for hanging out with me. I really do appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, then you can do the usual. You can like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. 
I hope you all have a beautiful day and I will see you next time. Bye.